This video is going to be comparing the extruder that I normally use to make my handles with a DIY caulking extruder, which costs a third the price. Um, it's actually the second time I recorded the video because when I got this, I was fairly convinced it wasn't going to work. Um, and so, spoiler alert, it does. And I recorded a video explaining why I didn't think this was going to work and then it did. So I'll show you again uh, and I'll show you it working. Uh, there are a few things that I don't like about it as much, but I'll put the two side by side so you can see. So the way the extruder works is you've got a barrel and a plunger that goes through it. And basically as you pull the trigger, that moves in, and pushes a plunger um, up the inside of the tube pushes all the clay out and you have a die on the end that gives you the shape of the extruded form. So that's basically the premise. Um, this one is sold as a DIY thing from Screwfix in the UK. Uh, no idea where you'll be able to find one anywhere else in the world, but if you can find anything that looks like this, chances are it is the same. Um, same principle, plunger is not the flat acrylic disc that you get here is um, obviously for a slightly different purpose. I didn't think it was going to seal very well. It's a bit flimsy. It's got uh, slots cut out of it. Turns out to not be a problem or not much of a problem. Clay does work its way backwards, but not very much, which makes sense because they are quite small slots. So that's the premise of it. That I don't like the mechanism. It doesn't work as well, um, but it works. So. Um, this does work and it is, as I said, for the price. This is, I think this was £14, whereas these are more like 40 to £50. Pounds. Um, these, the pottery ones, come with a set of um, aluminium dies. I don't think they're useful, but if you wanted a big flat rectangle or a big sausage shape, then actually they would be useful. So depending on whether or not you want those, you can factor that in uh, to the price. The things I don't like about this one are, I think, the release mechanism and the whole sliding mechanism is a bit stiffer. It doesn't want to slide very well, which isn't an ideal characteristic. This one slides more easily, still not super easily, but more easily. Another thing I really don't like is that for some reason it doesn't have the hard end stop that this one has and can go assume this is related to what it's actually intended for but that goes all the way out the end which if you've got a die on there means you can actually pull the trigger and apply pressure to the plastic die which maybe could break it I mean I think you probably have to go some but obviously at this point if you then pull the trigger again you are now all that pressure is being applied on the plastic anyway it works um, so I will demonstrate it because I need to make some handles uh, and this is how I use them. So I'll demonstrate it. With the cheap ones you can see it in action. Basically you want to have your plunger part at the end with the pottery one just put it to the full length with this one you've got to set it to the point where it's basically level. And what you're looking to do is get a ball of clay and load it in under some pressure. So if you just roll it into the right sort of shape and slide it down inside, you'll trap air around the outside, which then becomes bubbles within the clay when you extrude the handle. And they're very annoying because it means that section of handle either has to be repaired or discarded. So you want to have a handle which doesn't have air bubbles popping out of it and making holes. And the best way to do that is to load this with clay under pressure so no air gets in. And the best way to do that is this tab, which so this metal bit here, that releases the uh, plunger to move backwards. So the principle is that under its current position, it's sprung loaded to twist and it jams. So it can, as the plunger moves in, it releases the pressure and it can move, but then the plunger can't move backwards because it twists that and it jams. And then the, basically the inverse is true of the mechanism that slides it forwards. So as it moves forwards, it grips and it pushes it forwards, but as it comes back, it releases. So you've got this system where it can move in one direction, but it can't move the other. 
uh, until you push that bit in. So I push that in by placing it over the edge of a desk, which means that the plunger is now free to move. And then I get the ball of clay on the end of it and then press the ball of clay down. And what this means is obviously there's more clay trying to get into the tube than can and it's going in under pressure so there shouldn't be any air included. It still is not a perfect system but it will get rid of 90 something percent of the air bubbles and most of your clay will be usable. So like that and this is where you don't want that mechanism being too stiff which is what I thought the issue would be initially. It turns out it's okay, it works. Um, it might kind of get stiffer as it gets older and kind of more scuffed and scratched but um, for now the cheap ones seem to work so I'll give them that and then you can add more clay again you want to make sure that if you are adding the, the kind of leftovers or another ball of clay you really want to get it on so that it doesn't add any air in you can do it like that by just pushing from the center upwards and you've now got another mass of clay on top that you can also force in just saves wedging more clay so you've now got part of a plunger i don't tend to do the full plunger it's better off doing it uh, a few times with maybe a third of the plunger you could do the full thing loading in like this obviously the more clay there is that you're trying to force down the more it wants to resist you pushing in the more the clay will squidge out the sides just makes the process harder so unless there's a good reason why you want one continuous length that's going to be you know a few meters long um, you don't need to worry about it just do a few of uh, the shorter lengths so as I say I've loaded a couple of inches into this I'm going to use one of my acrylic dies they're available on my website um, I designed them because I couldn't find anything quite like them uh, especially not for this extruder so if you have one of these extruders with I think it's two and a quarter inch barrel whatever it says on the website um, that fits and it fits this perfectly which was the thing that initially I I knew that was true because other people had tried that but I didn't know how well it would work uh, and so I can confirm that the dies fit it perfectly they fit it as well as they do the one it's designed for um, and the function is all but the same. So I'm just going to wash my hands because you don't want it. Well, actually, no, I'll show you this and then I'll wash my hands after. You don't want to handle the clay if you've got clay dust on your hands because you'll add that to the handle and that's not great. But um, for the purposes of this demonstration, that's fine. So, so you pull the trigger and what you get is an extruded length of clay. And you can see there, those are the air bubbles. Or are they actually okay? No, I think I was just right. And now we go. I've hit the stop, and you can feel a bit more resistance. But if you weren't paying attention, you could apply a bit more pressure and force the die out. So actually, that's not extruded very well. Uh, that has, I think, those bits because of where they occurred. They're not air bubbles. They are, in fact, um, where the die has caught it, which I've not seen before, but I don't know how that could be because of the extruder, so it might just be that I did something wrong here. Um, but that is a length of clay that could become a handle, and then what I would do is chop it into sections. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 13 centimetres makes a good kind of two to three-ish up to definitely three to four um, finger handle. So everything I do, I do the small mugs at around 10, 10 and a half, depending on the design, up to 13 on the larger handle size for giant mugs. So to give you a rough idea of size, and then yeah, just chop them into length, bend them over, and then I use a rotary grinding bit to flare the end slightly and texture it. So there's like um, scoring essentially, but it does, I'll show you because it's just here. So if you cut a bit, then what you would do is you roll rotary grinding bit and you get a flared end. So it goes fatter at the end and it's got a bit of texture to, to grip that bit better. 
when you stick it on. Uh, and that's it basically. So it is actually a perfectly functional and uh, works well with my extruded dies and it's a third the price. Comes with some limitations, but in terms of how it actually functions, it's fine. So if you can't get hold of one of those or want a cheaper alternative, you can use one of these. Um, there are small advantages to the, the one that's designed for it, but realistically, um, this is as good at what it sets out to do. Um, oh yeah, and that's what I'll show you. You can sort of see some clay has come around and come through that gap, but um, no big deal. You've got to clean it anyway. It is a more, far more awkward shape to clean because it's got that, um, just all that texture to the surface. It, it's got a more complicated shape, whereas a flat disc is obviously very easy to wipe clean. But again, you're talking kind of an extra 30 seconds when it comes to cleaning it up each time, and it seems to be strong enough, so I don't think um, that's gonna be damaged from use. So yeah, if you want a cheap extruder, uh, and are in the UK or can find one in your country. This one from Screwfix, I'll put a link in the description for the actual one that it is. Um, but it's good to know that someone is out there, because I doubt Screwfix make these themselves or have them specifically made for them. Uh, I would have thought it's just, well, it says it's from Kingfisher International Products. So there is a company out there making these and I imagine they're selling them as, in as many countries as they can. Um, they say they're based in the EU, so you should be able to find them on the continent. America, I don't know, maybe, but uh, if you can find anything that looks like this, it probably works.